Yeah. 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 Or those sorts of things? Well, they can do that in the system. So the argument I say is you're not you know, increasing or reducing the risk. Um, what we are doing by building up you know, over time is that it gets easier to detect the people who are gaming the system. In a short consultation, two-week consultation, you really have no way, no basis to see histories or things like that to actually judge if someone's gaming the system. When you run something over longer term, you know, you generally find that um, sock puppets and the like tend to get exposed the longer they're in there. Uh, you can see when, you know, the, the Twitter account is set up 30 minutes before the promotion, you know, or the television show tweets during the show extremely favourably and then doesn't see any activity afterwards. You know, we've seen those things picked up very, very easily. With something like this, someone could create a reputation over time. That's right. Like eBay exactly. And that's part of the strength of it, because if people build up reputations in their communities, that's obviously something that people like doing. So we're trying to work off the things that people, you know, inherently try to do. They want to have a reputation. They want to, you know, be acknowledged as someone who knows about this stuff in their local area. Um, and that helps guard against a lot of the, um, you know, the, the gaming of the system over time. But it does even require over time, it's not an instant fix. Um, and we're trying to encourage agencies to say, well, consider this platform if you're doing a consultation. We can set up a, a short-term forum for you, we can use an existing forum. Um, you can moderate it if you choose, rather than us. Um, we have put all our moderation guidelines and our community guidelines and all our internal moderation guidelines as well are all available through the website. So we've basically exposed all of our documentation. How we go about deciding, you know, how people can put in blog posts and anybody in the country can submit a blog post. We don't discriminate. Um, and, uh, and how we basically go about deciding what appears and what doesn't appear, which is basically, you know, well, basically we're, in a lot of senses it's actually media in that sense, in terms of that. But um, we run it um, in a very, very transparent way. Just on that point, people gaming the system. You just when your community gets to a certain size, you can't, you can't sit here right now and think of all the ways they're going to think of gaming that system. No. You, you just have to spot it when you do see a pattern forming, and then come up with your idea of how you can counteract that. But you have to run them long enough to see that. Yeah, yeah, you have to. And if you can start small and grow, that's right. That's, that's but the difficulty, or well, the, the benefit is this you can run lots of spot consultations in different mm. departments, different places, different times. You're still keeping that core, mm. you know, personas. And people only have to log in with the same username and password, you know, which they can take off as well. You can do lots of consultations. But they don't actually share the information and do those sort of things through them. The government doesn't own all that data, it's all, you know, mm -hmm. who owns it well. No, you get the spot for the usual suspects. Yeah, um, you do get to spot them, which you get through, you know, you notice them through ministerials, you do notice them through complaints processes over time. Uh, and what all you require is a time, most consultations don't run long enough to really identify that. Craig, one of the things we're, we're thinking about in this consultation space is, is about the cost of entry, mm -hmm. which is very low, and that's the great thing about this technology, it's very easy to contribute. But the idea that, that over time, as you're saying, the authority increases and the yes. ability to participate, maybe be more informed, to, to be identified, be more committed to some sort of public good at the end of it, maybe over yeah. a period of time, means that the cost of entry may, may go up a bit. It won't be a financial cost, but it could be that you have to read these documents. You well, see, and, 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 and then yes. there's an output. So, Having a, grad, a graduation, not just one size fits all, but having a different types of consultation. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, well, we're not trying to basically have things that run over a long period of time necessarily. And people can have conversations about their communities in that way. But when it comes to consultations, government can do it in a traditional way, just using this as a mechanism, yeah. and then have an extra couple of levels of safeguards in terms yeah. of, you know, um, the other detect.
you know, sort of partners, it will be better, be able to track changes in views over time so you can run the same consultation you know, every year or something like that. Uh, but in, in terms of whether or not there's a barrier to entry, I think that's got more to do with the individual consultation, whether they're bill bonds or not. Um, with all the data we're providing through the website, we're also trying to provide a lot of context for people. Because what I often find um, in government, you know, people say, oh, we'd love to consult on it, but people don't have enough context. You say, well, give them all the information. They say, well, we don't want to give them the information because they might you know, not understand it. And it actually gets, it's, it's really a distancing technique. It's a very dangerous distancing technique to basically say, oh, my community isn't bright enough to understand this consultation because I won't give them the information that they need to actually understand it. Um, and that really is, is not a recipe for good democracy over time. Um, so if you actually release the information to it, yeah, they might throw stones at you for some of it, but the fact is it will be a much richer and more informed discussion. At the end of it, you'll come out with um, solutions that, you know, where people don't agree with them, at least they'll know that they've been heard and they'll be able to positively see the reasons you've made these decisions. Uh, I think a lot of issues with consultations at the moment is we run them quite a black box approach. And it's very hard for people to understand the link between what they put in as a submission and what comes out as a policy and they feel disenfranchised through the process. And that's where the ideas system can then be adapted into a policy system where you have policies go through the same thing, where you have things that are submitted as policies that are get considered by the department then there might be a, well, we're going to include aspects of it, and you comment on what gets included. Uh, or you might say, well, we're not going to consider it for these reasons, and then you move through into a, you know, how it's implemented. Which theoretically requires a little bit of work on the steps to say in or out, or you know, partially in and out. But what it does do, it also makes it a much more engaged process. Um, and I think it's better and long term. We'll take a bit of education and get government agencies to that point. Is there anything we're missing? What should we be doing or not? I know you can always go back later and put ideas in our idea system. How are you telling the public that? Okay. At the moment, we're not really actively telling the public. Because funnily enough, when you think about it, it's for the public, but our initial target isn't the public. Our initial target are all different organisations that might either put data and music and blog posts into the system and run consultations on it, um, because they're the organisations who do have a direct need and you know, budgets and people to basically go out and target their audiences. Now we are already getting some people in there and we are going to do some grassroots things with communities. Um, but, you know, wherever possible, we'll be working through other government agencies, through IDAs and through other groups. Because at the end of the day, the actual website, from our point of view, is kind of like a business-to-business -business website. Because we're providing a service for other government organisations. But we're doing that through providing tools to citizens to basically empower them to better understand how government operates in their region and to better you know, in, involve them in policy processes. So it's a little bit different model to most government sort of websites as such. I don't think there are a lot of people actually, you know, necessarily in government who are used to working in business business spaces. But it is a different type of model for marketing. I was just uh, thinking about it. The, the definition of region is what I call this. No, the way regions are defined, uh, the, re the regions across Australia are, are basically um, uh, they're groups of local councils for the most part, except in South Australia, grouped together into sort of larger regions. So there's 55 of them across Australia, um, and that includes the external territories, Christmas Island and Cobra Healing and so forth. But they're actually also in a, in a region as well. Um, funnily enough, my agency actually has direct state government style responsibilities for Christmas Island and Jervis Bay. So we actually directly provide services to those areas. So we have kind of like a dual role in that sense. We've got a whole division committed to engagement with regions. So we have got a lot more contact than most government agencies. 
um, but the regions uh, tend to have been, you know, where do you draw the line on that? Every community kind of defines itself, and if you rely on the communities across Australia to define themselves, it might become very, very hard. There's probably holes that populations can fall through, and there are areas where you know, people would overlap. So you have to assign some kind of arbitrary boundaries, and that's what's assigned right now. Uh, the, the, the only thought I had was it's, it's, it's very, um, very old approach to do all Australia in one go. Don't tell my minister there. Is there, <laughs> is there, ever, is there ever a... A thought to do a small part? Yeah, yeah, the pilot, pilot well, take a specific region mm. uh, and develop it because it seems to me that the, yeah. the amount of cross talk uh, between each region is going to be like almost zero. Yeah, like, well, well, maybe it's a coastal. Yeah. Some coastal regions might yeah. find some commonality, um, but it's, it, it strikes me as being, uh, uh, you, you'll have a very, un, you know, you're always inviting an uneven uh, response, and, and yes. you won't ever quite learn why. I mean, well, that's the north coast, and that's East Gippsland, where you want, you know. It, 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 look, it's something, I, I got to the uh, you know, a couple of months ago, um, which is the time period we've basically spent on building and launching it's probably probably works now. Um, and I did say to them, look, you do know that you know some regions are just going to remain dead and some of them will you know be quite active. And they said, yep, yeah, no, we appreciate that and we accept that and we're okay with that. Um, so the approach we're taking at the moment has been if we're building the tools for one region, we may as well put them in place for everyone at the same time, because it's no additional cost to to do so, and it would be kind of silly to, you know, require people to come to government to ask for their region to be set up. I think, you know, where possible we want to say, okay, here's the platform, everybody can use it, it's now up to you as to whether you choose you to use it, and then the focus has to be in terms of that engagement site, working through agencies and RDAs and so forth. Um, the next step, and, you know, we've only been launched two weeks and we're still in our sort of like our, our cooling off period basically make sure everything's working fine, to start building some of the, the relationships we need for you know, expanding the data, which has to happen over time, because it takes a lot of work. Um, and, and also you know, determining what other tools need to be built into it for various purposes. But um, the, the approach we'll probably take over time is to you know, target some RDAs and basically work with them very specifically in different regions, targets and our old GAs and work with them specifically. But at this point we're kind of identifying and they start to realise benefits, then the others will grow interested. And I would love to see every region of Australia having open and active discussions over the things that are important to them. But the fact is it's probably never going to happen. Um, you know, or if it does it will take a very long time. There's a search engine way I just to uh, put in your own city uh, town's name and find out. Not them. yet, not yet. We're working on that. At the moment we launched with postcode and region, which is not good enough. We're, we've oh, got suburb. Yeah, postcode gets you part of the way there. There are some places in Australia that have difficulties with postcodes. There's some postcodes that overlap. Mm -hmm. It's not perfect. We're working on suburb town names. Yeah. We're working on any other ways. We basically want people to say whatever geographic thing that they define is where they live. It's basically that this is your region. But the other part of it is we're also looking at, um, you know, we've got discrete forums for every region, but we're also defining things by theme and by topic as well. We've got a certain defined list of topic, which is also published on the website, um, that we kind of group things into. And the reason for that is a kind of threefold. So firstly, it's easier for government departments to say, okay, so these things are talking about transport, we're talking about health. And that means it falls more directly into policy area. So it cuts down a number of agencies who might say, well, that's something I want to watch or participate in. So it makes it easier for them. For, for the public, um, again, it, it provides some kind of loose grouping that they can sort of hold on topics. And we always have general categories as well. But what it really allows us to do is to basically say, OK, tell me what people are saying about health across all of my state. Or all, all of the country. And it lets us bring those forum conversations together 
So it's not just 